Ramble. Hi, I'm Emma Chamberlain, and this is Stupid Genius, the podcast where I'm stupid and I'm also a genius. And today we're talking about why did dogs lick humans? Okay, so this is actually a really good one. I like this. Okay, I say this about every single thing that we talk about because why would I talk about it if I didn't like it? But I mean, I always had dogs growing up. I love dogs. And I really do love when they lick me. Now, I'm going to give you a little TMI story that I really don't want to tell you because I'm definitely going to get judged for this one. But I, when I was little, I would lay on the floor and I would just let my dogs like come over and kiss me in the face. And I would like snuggle them. And like, it was so fun for me, like gross. And my mom would always be like, ew, like stop. Like, don't let the dogs lick your face. And I was like, "Oh, oh, no. Like, I just like didn't care. Like it was something that didn't gross me out. Now that I'm older... And I get acne, like a dog licking my face is not in my schedule. But um, yeah, so anyway, I I want, I mean, the thing to me is like, I don't think any other animals lick. It's a very unique thing to dogs. And like, dogs are very unique though. Like, I have a lot of dogs in my life. Like my best friend Amanda has a dog named Napa. Napa, babysit that. I'm not gonna, that was gonna be, no, no brand deals after what I was about to say. But I was gonna call the dog a hoe. I'm like, you know what, maybe like I shouldn't. But um, I, my parents have dogs. I babysit my friend Amanda's dog, Napa, all the time. And like the connection, the bond, the special personalities. I mean, they're seriously, okay, I'm starting to sound like a dog mom now. Like, let me just take all my dogs to the dog park now. Like, no. But I just, I do. I've always had a special connection to dogs. I love snuggling them and I love their affection unless they're kissing me in the face because I already have acne and that's from my hormones. The last thing I need is acne from bacteria in a dog's mouth. Okay, so here is a very exciting story that completely has everything to do with dog shit and nothing less. So growing up, I was a gymnast. I was a cheerleader. That was something that I loved or whatever. And, uh, you know, an hour of practice every few days was not enough for me. Actually, it was like two hours. Two hours of practice every few days was not enough for me. I would go home and literally practice cheerleading, gymnastics, whatever, like for hours just in my house. Like I bought mats. Like I would go on my front lawn. Like it was an ordeal. Well, when I was a cheerleader and I was first starting, there was a skill that I really wanted to get and it was called a back walkover, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you it's actually fucking scary, um, to be quite honest. It's when you stand up with your arms above your head and you basically do a back bend, but then as you're doing a back bend, you kick over at the same time. Very terrifying, honestly. Still to this day, one of my least favorite skills I ever had to learn. Even more scary than literally doing a standing back tuck, which you would think would be more scary. No, like back walkovers win. Um, Anyway, well, I was learning that skill. It took me forever, and I started to get frustrated. I was like, why am I not getting this? Like, I've literally been working on this for months. Like, it's just not happening. My body just won't do it. And so my dad was like, all right, let's let's work on it. Like, let's work on it every day. And I was like, okay. So one day, it was evening time. Like, the sun had already gone down, and I'm on my front lawn with my dad doing bag walkovers, okay? Now, mind you, at night, snails come out. Okay, and slugs and all that, mind you, I'm very, very afraid of them. Would I say I have a phobia? No, but like borderline, yes. Like I have a phobia of caterpillars and that's genuine, but like slugs are more just like resembles a caterpillar and that's why I'm scared. So anyway, I've always been really grossed out by them and I was doing back walkovers. (laughs) I'm laughing about this story already. I was doing back walkovers with my dad on my lawn (laughs) and I do a back walkover and I land in what I think is a slug. Okay. And oh my God, let me tell you, I've never started. I immediately scream and start crying and I run. I literally like run off the grass and I run into my house and quickly I realized that that was not a slug and it was dog shit. So this is why you don't do back walkovers in your front lawn because some people don't pick up dog shit and then now I'm my back walkover 13-year-old ass stepped in it. Thank you. 
I literally am not kidding. Let's backtrack a sec. Whenever I stepped in whatever I stepped in, which ended up being dog shit at the moment, I thought it was a slug. I literally stripped down and got into my underwear and ran through my house crying. That's how upset I was. I was like, I don't even want to fucking be wearing clothes right now. Like, I don't want anything constricting my body. I want to get, I just want to be able to let loose. I'm pissed. I was so upset. I was just more terrified too. And I just was like, claustrophobic like i i was like i can't be wearing clothes like i need to be naked and i was scream crying i mean i do have issues like just to like justify like you know i have issues do we know what they are not yet but i mean i think that this is solid proof for my future therapist i literally was so upset and terrified i ended up getting my back walk over eventually uh I ended up doing back walkovers in my living room moving forward, despite the fact that there was potential for kicking my dad's piano. I didn't care. It was better than, you know, stepping on a slug. Honestly, too, I didn't say this yet, but when I figured out that it was dog shit instead of a slug, I was happy. Imagine stepping in dog shit and being like, oh my God, mood, big T, thank God, relief, up bay, okay, whatever. Like, I literally at that point was like, oh my God, yes. And also the funny thing too, that I didn't mention immediately when I stepped on whatever I stepped on, I literally said, ow, like I screamed out, like it hurt me, but it like, there was nothing sharp in it. It was, uh, it was dog shit or a slug. And either way, nothing about that has any sort of anything in it that would hurt you. Um, in any way, honestly, in retrospect, like stepping on a slug probably would have been an easier situation but you know what i'm gonna stop talking about that all right so let's get into this first we're starting out with the word of the day the stupid genius word of the day is mongrel a mongrel is a dog of no definable type or breed it's another word for mutt bok bok to that okay number one love him <laughs> okay but um okay this is i love this i love that this is the word of the day. well okay when I first heard the word mongrel, whatever that is, I was like, okay, like, mm, beats me, like, never heard anything remotely like that word in my life. But mutt is something I'm more familiar with because I've only ever had mutts. Okay, wait, that's actually a lie. I did have a schnauzer when I was, like, five, but, um, rest in peace, Zachy. Anyways, but, um, I... I, I'm not gonna lie, there's no better dog than a mutt. I don't know why, I just, I like the fact that they're a little bit more unique, and I feel like uh, mutts are the ones that people don't necessarily adopt first, you know? Like, I think people always go to the purebred, they're like, oh, I want a purebred toy poodle, okay, aka me, like, I would love a toy poodle, but also, there's something so special about mutts because they are unique, and they're like, you know, a, a unique combo that like, you know, you have to get them DNA tested to know what they are. Like that's special. You know what I mean? And when people come up to you and they're like, what type of dog do you have? And you're like, it's a mutt. They're like, oh, like talk about a conversation starter. You know what I mean? If you just have a toy poodle walking around with your toy poodle, people are like, what kind of dog is that? Oh, wait, I already know that it's a toy poodle because it literally has like no hair on its middle body and like a complete fluff ball and its head and tail. Like I know what it is already conversation over. There was no fun in that. So moral of the story is we stand mutts. We love them. They're the best. Okay. Um, my ideal mutt, just in case any of you were wondering, nobody was wondering would be, Oh my God, this is going to make me sound like a little, this is not even a mutt because this is just like a, this is a purposely bred mutt. And I would never get one because I like to rescue dogs, but I love these dogs. I love Maltese poodles. I am so annoying. Like, it was like, yes. Like, I want to have a Maltese poodle and bring it to Coachella, okay? And then just carry it around, bump to all the tunes with the dog, like, you know, put it in a little, like, purse, maybe like a... I don't know, maybe get a custom-made Louie bag to put the dog... I'm totally fucking with you. But um, anyway, so we love Mutts. Moving forward, let's actually get to hypothesizing. It's time to hypothesize why we think dogs like humans. All right, so guess number one. You know, one thing I know about dogs, 
like more than anything. I mean, being around dogs for, for my whole life, also babysitting my friend Amanda's dog all the time, also just seeing dogs on the street walking around. One thing that we all know and love and can relate to about dogs is their constant intense hunger, okay? Like dogs are really out here always hungry. Like you drop literally like a piece of dust on the ground and they're eating it. I mean, they're fucking hungry all the time. And I mean, mood, but like still, I think a lot of animals tend to be ravenous, you know, because they're like, I don't know when I'm getting my next meal. Who's calling me now? Oh, okay. Numbers late. Hi. Um, but I think a lot of animals kind of share that constant hunger aspect because they don't know when they're getting their next meal. But I think that sometimes dogs get a little bit confused about what their food is and what their owner is. And they're like, oh, licky, licky. Okay. You know what I mean? And I think that they look at a human and they're like, that looks like a hot dog. Oh my God, I want to eat it. But I know I can't. I know I can't because there's something that tells me inside of my little doggy brain that I can't eat that. But I want to. Okay. So what's the middle ground? I'm going to lick it. All right. And so dogs, they look at their owners. They look at humans. They look at you know, people that they feel slight affection towards and they just lick because they want to eat it. But I feel like the only thing that dogs can't eat but they would want to eat are humans because I feel like dogs know that they can't eat humans because humans take care of them, you know? And so they know, they're like, that's my homie. Okay, I can't eat them. But like, let's say a cat right? You don't see a dog licking a cat like ever. I mean, it's happened. Let's not act like it hasn't happened. It has, but it's not common. Like you see, like you would see, do you know what? No. The likelihood of you seeing a dog like chasing and trying to eat a cat is a lot more likely than you seeing a dog chasing around a human trying to eat it. You wouldn't see that. You just don't because they know better. So the middle ground for them, they're like, all right, I can eat anything else that exists, but I can't eat humans. So the only thing I know to do is to freaking lick it. All right. That's it. Lick it. (laughs) Not right. I kind of thought so, but I mean, whatever. All right. Well, one down, two to go. I already have my next one right in line to my brain. And that's simple. This one's simple. And I think that this one's right. Honestly. I mean, I don't know. I feel like dogs, they love a lot of stuff. You know, they love peanut butter. They love food. They love their owner. They love belly rubs. I mean, they love a lot of stuff. I feel like dogs, more than even cats, more than even like, a cow, I mean, I don't think cows, well, cows might have feelings. I don't know. I mean, no, they do have feelings, but like, I feel like dogs show emotion a lot more than other animals. I feel like they're a lot more sensitive and I feel like me and dogs really can relate. Um, we're both very emotional and probably both need therapy, but neither of us have it. Um, me and dogs are one and the same, which is why I feel like I know dogs like the back of my hand and I know that when I love something or I love someone, I want them to know. And in the same breath, dogs want people to know that they love them because duh. Okay. So for them, instead of giving a hug, giving a kiss, giving a word of affirmation, they give a little licky. That's all I'm saying. Like, I feel like that's their form of affection and appreciation. Like, I mean, I don't really see a dog. Like, the only time that I've ever been licked by a dog is when I get home and I sit down on the floor and doggy comes up to me and is licking my face and giving me kisses, like whatever. Like, that's when I get, and it's because they missed me. Because I am that awesome. 
I get it. I'd miss me too. Like, I mean, I, you know, I'm not blaming them. Like it's not their fault that they just can't resist me. Like I, it's very common, but like, especially with them, like with dogs it's because they have to lick, you know, because it's the only thing that they know how to do. And do you know what? Although it may be slobbery, although if you really, really think about it, it's weird. It's actually really hashtag precious. So that's my guess. That's right. So there's a plot twist in this one. So that was right. Okay, queen, me. Um, but there's actually another scenario where dogs kiss humans, which is awesome because I got it on the second try. So this podcast would be very much cut short if we didn't have this other scenario. All right. Well, I need to dig into the depths of dark depths of my brain right now and think about another time that a dog has licked me okay you know what i'm saying okay like you know what i'm saying it's up to you to get your mind out of the gutter all right that's up to you i'm just over here being me okay if you want to be creepy you be creepy but don't do it near me okay that also sounded bad oh my god i literally can't say anything okay whatever moving on Okay, so let me try to think of another scenario here. Okay, mood. I found it. I found it in my brain. All of the files have been opened up and then they've been closed. We know where we're going with this. So the only real other time that I can remember getting that form of affection from a dog was when I had food on my face. Um, or on my hands. Or food basically anywhere. Um, that sounds bad too. That like, that sounds bad because every single middle school had that whole peanut butter rumor, but like, let me give you an example. Like, even if there's no food visibly on my face, dogs know. Okay. Dogs can smell it. Like if I had, what's like a food like that a dog would want to eat off my face. Like if I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. And like peanut butter is something that lingers. Like I feel like peanut butter is pungent. It's not a bad thing, but it's just the way it is. Like it, if you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, your hand is going to smell like peanut butter for at least the next 20 minutes minimum. I mean, seriously, maybe the peanut butter. Okay. Do you know what? Why are we going on a tangent about peanut butter? Nobody asked for that. All right. Going back to what I was saying, um, dogs smell it and they want what you have. So they try to lick it off of you. Are they going to succeed? Probably not. They're not going to get anything out of it, but they think that they will. And that's all it takes for a little lick from a dog. All right. And you know what? I don't even mind because I would be completely lying to you if. Okay. So one time I was eating strawberries out of a bowl, cut up whatever juice was in them. So obviously like I had strawberry on my hand and afterwards and my dog wanted some so bad but I was hungry and I didn't want to give my dog any so afterwards I let him lick my hand and then I went and washed my hands afterwards like if that isn't true love I don't know what is and that's why I love dogs because I feel like I'll do anything for them like I will literally let them lick my hand clean because I just want to be there for them you know and also because it's nice because then like you know I don't have to use as much soap and like scrubbing to get it off when I wash my hands afterward like I need therapy Okay, how was that one? Okay, at least my second one was right. Like, at least my second guess was right. All right, let's hear what the real, real answer is. I'm Professor Flula, here with the stupid genius answer to why do dogs lick? There are actually several reasons, guys. The first is, it's a way of trying to show affection. When we pick up our doggies or give them attention, we typically pet or kiss their heads and pat their furs. They show affection back by licking us. However, they also use licking as a way of getting attention. This is usually a learned behavior because typically after a dog licks you, yes, it's true, you give them more attention. But they can also use licking as a sensory tool. So if they're licking random objects or areas of your house, they're probably just exploring. I'm Professor Flüleborg, and that was the stupid genius answer of the day. Oh my God, tea. This is such big tea. Okay, so this is something... I'm going to start using in my daily life. Okay, so you want attention. You just start licking late. This podcast is 
border has been borderline rated R this whole time and it's not my fault. It's your fault because I don't think about life like this, but you do. And that's an issue. Okay. But you know what? Let's just, if it's all about my tone of voice. Okay. And this podcast is PG. No, it's not actually whatsoever. I say fuck way too much, whatever. But you know what? Like I wouldn't be opposed to like licking my friends when they're ignoring me because they're on their phone. Like just a little arm lick, like nothing too creepy, nothing too weird. Just like a little like, okay. And then being like, you know, like, and then they're obviously going to look over and be like, the fuck? Like, oh, are you good? And then I'd be like, okay, well now that you're listening. Okay. So anyway, so like Tommy, like my Instagram photo, like whatever, you know what I mean? Okay. Wait, I need to not use anybody's name because that would be, that would cause too many issues. People would be like, who's Tommy? What the fuck? And then look up every Tommy and DM them and be like, um, What's going on here? Okay, well, now that I have your attention, Urban Outfitters is having a home decor sale. Oh, my God. Look over here. I'm getting a new couch. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Anyway, so going to start using that. Um, will I lose friends? Don't care. Actually, I do. I kind of need my friends or else I will be completely by myself. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I mean, I respect their decision. I, I get it. When you need attention and you need it now, we will resort to all tactics like there's no I mean I'm trying to think about something I do to get attention when I'm not getting it okay usually what I do when I want attention is I just don't talk and people are like oh wait what Emma's not talking it's been a minute and a half like is she okay attention time love that love that great manipulation but like also just not putting up a fight like I'm not doing anything but then I get attention love that no effort actually me not talking takes effort. I love talking. But that's what I do. I just give everyone the silent treatment until they give me attention and then the silent treatment's over. But you know what I'm saying. And then dogs lick. I mean, I'm not judging. And I'm going to tell the story about how I got my two family dogs because although that might be boring to some of you, both of the stories were very random. And one of them's kind of emo, but like it's kind of like a happy story. Like y'all might start crying, but then like you'll be smiling by the end. So like mood. Okay, so I have two dogs. One's name is Sammy. One's name is Henry. Both terrier mutts, pretty small, very odd looking. For some reason, my mom and I are very attracted to very ugly dogs. Like I don't know what it is. So first dog we got was Henry. And I was like 13. And my mom and I were like, we're getting a dog. We're bored and lonely. Let's do it. So we go online and we were looking for schnauzer Yorkie mixes and we found one very quickly that was on a weird ass website that we definitely shouldn't have trusted. We immediately made an offer and we got it and they were like, all right, let's meet at a McDonald's two hours away from where you live. Definitely should have been a red flag. Uh, not like we were going to die or anything considering it was in a parking lot midday, like good luck killing me. Like everyone's going to see it. But more just a red flag about the dog. Like, how's this dog going to show up? What kind of shape is this dog going to be? Okay, well, it wasn't good. So we show up, and there's this schnauzer, Yorkie-looking, who knows what he is, type of dog. Definitely not doing well. Um, he looked oily. Like, I don't... He looked awful. I mean, to be quite honest. Very skinny, whatever uh they just said that he was the runt of the litter and that's why he looked so sick and we were like my mom and i both you know we're not idiots <sighs> i mean sometimes but we're not usually idiots and in this situation we definitely weren't and we were like even if this dog like is sick like we don't want it with these people anymore his name was blue boy when we adopted him uh also questionable what the fuck is that uh, which we ended up naming him Henry, which is even more questionable, but whatever. That was my idea. 13-year-old me had a lot of issues. Um, but anyway, we take this dog immediately to the vet, and the vet was like, sorry, like this dog's not living through the night. And we're like, what? Like, it's been alive this whole time. Like, why tonight? Like, what do you mean? They're like, no, this dog is so sick. And my mom and I were like, we love this little man. It's not happening. We're like, nope, sorry, no. Like, no. Both of us were like, 
you don't understand what we're going to do to keep this dog healthy and get it back to healthiness, okay? So uh, we didn't really know what was wrong with Henry. They thought that he had parvo. They thought he had all of these diseases and stuff. Turns out he only really had a skin disease and tapeworms, which was like best case scenario. So we're like, fuck you, veterinarian. Your negative ass is not accepted here. We don't like you. Well, we do because you helped him. But like at first, your negative energy was just so unnecessary um, because Bay lived and mom and I were right. So anyway... We ended up nursing Henry back to health. Obviously, we renamed him to Henry because Blue Boy was not cutting it. Even though, if you guys know the song Blue Boy by Mac DeMarco, that's definitely a slap. So, you didn't hear it from me. Whatever. But, um, anyway. So, <sighs> Henry lives to this day being a sassy king. We love him. He's very cute. Definitely sassy, though. Can be violent. Has bitten my lip before. Like, he, not in a cute way either, <laughs> like, like, he, like, bit my face. Um, I don't remember why. It was probably my fault. Um, I might have had peanut butter on my lip. To this day, we don't know. Anyway, I also have a dog named Sammy. Um, Sammy was a little bit less of a, like, sob story and more of a, like, Emma, you're a dumb bitch story. I, when I was a cheerleader, I had practice two hours away from where I lived. That's with traffic. It was, like, 45 minutes to an hour and a half with like no traffic, depending on like what we were feeling that day, what we wanted to take, whatever. But it was far away because the gym that I wanted to go to was good and I wanted to be that bitch. Okay, whatever. So uh, it was all the way in Livermore, California, which is like so far from where I lived. And there was a Petco near my gym and we would drive by it and there was also a Target near it. So we would get snacks before practice, stuff like that. So we were always near this Petco and Every Sunday, they would have an adoption center outside, and I happened to have practice on Sunday mornings. So after practice, my mom and I would go do a Target run and drive past the Petco, and then, you know, me being me would be like, oh, sorry, we are going to go say hi to the puppies, okay? So we started making this a ritual where we would go see these puppies every Sunday, and I mean, there was cute puppies every time. I mean, seriously, and it was like, it was a painful journey every time, like leaving without one. But we were always like, okay, these puppies are like, obviously gonna be adopted like today. It's not like these dogs, whatever. But it got to a point where we started seeing the same puppies over and over again, and some of them weren't getting adopted. And there was one in particular that was this gray, weird looking motherfucker, okay? I mean, legs just so long, just abnormally long, tiny head, tiny body, but these long ass legs, kind of like an Italian greyhound, but terrier looking, cutest face I've ever seen though. I mean, seriously, that dog has the cutest face I've ever seen. And it was so awkward, like me, mood. And so I was like, I need to, uh, like, I, I have a connection to it. And it's funny because the first few times I saw this dog, I didn't really feel anything. And then once I revisited the you know adoption center i was like okay this dog is so bae Aww. like i need it so my mom and i were like what the fuck we need to get this dog but then i kind of had like a wake-up moment where i was like wait no we can't have another dog like we we already have one we live in a tiny tiny apartment like how are we this is stupid and then my mom was like no we need it and is getting all emotional i'm like I'm like 14. Why am I talking you out of getting the dog? I'm supposed to be the one that's crying and you're supposed to be the one that's like, no, like, no, honey, like, no. You don't even know what responsibility is like. You're seven. Like, that's what, you know, and now the roles are reversed and I'm being like, anyway. So long story short, my mom talked me into getting the dog and then we got the dog and now his name is Sammy. His name was, I don't remember what his name was when we adopted him, but it really didn't last more than five minutes. So who cares? But anyway, so that's how I got my two dogs. They now live with my mom. I now live in LA, so I don't really get to see them much, but when I do, it's a great experience. So anyway, that's today's podcast. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. We talked about a very heartwarming and hashtag relatable topic. If you're allergic to dogs, might as well have clicked out within the first three seconds because you just can't relate. 
Let's also give some love to Flula Borg, our professor who tells us the word of the day and reveals our answers every podcast. We love him, and he's so awesome, so funny. Make sure to check out his podcast, Boom Time, when you get a chance. Maybe do it right now. After you finish listening to this, though. Anyway, I'm Emma Chamberlain. That was Stupid Genius, the podcast where I'm stupid and I'm also a genius. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Stupid Genius on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure to check out at Ramble Official on Instagram for more behind-the-scenes video and content for Stupid Genius. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>